be my first ever YouTube video after uh, years of guys telling me that I should be taking videos and putting them on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> so I uh, didn't have a lot of experience with it or anything so uh, you know looking back on it now I, I really uh, could have spent a little more time explaining what was going on and uh, what I was doing uh, during the hunt. Um, so thought we'd just uh, take this time to go back, go through some clips, and uh, I'll kind of fill in in areas that I uh, kind of could add a little more input to. So, uh, thanks for watching. If you enjoy the video, please like and subscribe. Uh, I plan on uh, making a lot more videos, so uh, hopefully everybody enjoys them. So, let's get into it. Not a real big one. It's a few hours old too. They haven't even gotten to where I want to go yet. A little better track, but it's no giant older still We're still working our way down to the cut that I've been hunting around so they were moving last night quite a few deer tracks around some fresh but so far just does we'll see if we can find our big boy so I was out early so making sure I had time to ride all the roads in the dark and uh, you know that's really important and, and I have a hard time doing it. I'm, I'm impatient and I was real bad when I was younger. You know, you, you see a track and you just want to jump right on it. Uh, but you know, even if it takes you a half an hour or an hour even, if it's a big block of woods, if, if you can drive around it on the roads then uh, you really need to take the time to do that because I know I've cost myself a lot of time uh, you know getting on a buck track and he crosses one road crosses another road and you know I know that track was made in the in the night in the dark and if I just taken the time and, and gone up ahead I had to save myself hours and miles so it, it's important to do that and uh, I did that and before finding the track I got on I found uh, two decent buck tracks um, the first one was uh, pretty soon as I had gotten into the woods I wasn't down towards the area I had planned on hunting where you know I knew there were some some nice bucks and uh, the second one I saw it was a decent buck um, and it might have been one I'd come back to if I couldn't find anything else but uh, I went down the ridge and I didn't show this part and I and I took a road off to the left and a buck had come across that road as well and I would I'm 100% sure that it was that same buck you know this road's probably a half mile down from where he crossed the road where I first saw him but I'm pretty sure that buck had come up out of there and crossed that road again so that's an example that you know if I'd come in from the other way found that track jumped right on it I'd have wasted a whole bunch of time and energy getting up that ridge following him so you know it's important to take your time and do your riding um, save yourself some time 
and uh, who knows, you may even come across a bigger, fresher track. buck right there so I keep chasing the doe and kind of riding checking roads seeing what's been going in what's been coming out yards there was actually three deer come through there it looked like a buck and a doe together and then a big buck afterwards and they were all over the place there's moose tracks in here but uh i get up ahead and on the tracks and there was only two two sets of tracks and it wasn't the big one so that doe's in heat. You can see where she peed. She's got blood right in her, right in her piss. So she's hot. So there's gonna be bucks roaming in around here. <clears throat> uh, and this guy actually looks a little fresher. So he's got a big stride, big track. made a little half ass scrape and thrashed around a little bit so he's roaming wind's starting to pick up a little bit so that's good be nice to get get a shot or two with this one so I got myself in a barnyard <clears throat> I didn't get far at all on the track before I was right in the middle of the barnyard. Um, you know, it's just an area where there's been a bunch of deer feeding, uh, there's beds there. Uh, this, this area had a bunch of swell grass, it had been cut a couple few years ago, uh, so there was a lot of young growth in there. And, uh, you know, it, it took a lot of time to get through there, it, I'm saying uh, it spent at least an hour making it the first quarter mile on the track and you know part of that is i don't it, it's hard to track deer through there and especially you know when there's that much deer activity you really need to have your head out and need to be looking around okay so i actually i i started making loops um you know trying to find a buck track coming out of there so the, the track that I got on when I got into the woods happened to come down through where that buck and doe had come and he was a lot fresher, but he walked right in through that mess. So, um, and I mentioned that when I got down th through there a ways, he had veered off somewhere and I was on the bucket, the older buck and doe track. And it's not a bad mistake to make, okay? Because you know, there's a lot of deer in the area and I was up looking around, I was looking for deer. I didn't have my head down, you know, looking every step he made. I try to track as far ahead as possible. You know, I'm, I'm looking up ahead. If I can see his tracks 20 yards ahead, I don't look at the ground. I'm looking around the woods, I'm scanning, see if he's standing there. You know, he's not, if the tracks go that way, most of the time he's not standing right up ahead when you see him, he's standing over here or he's standing over there. So, you know, don't don't have your head down too much and as far as getting out of the barnyard I just started my, making my loops a little bigger a little bigger and uh, then finally 
I come up on that two sets of tracks coming out, one being that big buck. So I made it out of the barnyard. I got two tracks. Headed down towards the brook. <clears throat> one's a big buck, the other one's either a big doe or a medium buck. But they're just walking right now, so I'm gonna try to gain some time. Move on them here. There's all kinds of doe beds back in that. <clears throat> Whole swamp swale grass area there where they've been feeding. Steer tracks everywhere. But I finally got a big one coming out of there, so let's see what we can do on it. Now, once I left the barnyard, we headed into a bunch of dark growth, and there was a lot of mature dark growth in there, um, but it was thick, and there was a lot of tracks, but those tracks were crisscrossing. The buck track I was on, and like I said, the, the track I was on was real hot. You could tell um, at the end of the snowstorm, which ended about nine o'clock the night before, it had rained on top of it, and uh, it actually made me quite nervous that snow was going to be crunchy. But it was nice and soft and, and perfect. It was just a, a great day for tracking. Um, but as I was going through the, the soft growth there, he was taking long strides and, and, and I wanted to move along because he wasn't weaving, he was, he was moving in, in pretty much a straight direction, but the problem was there were so many tracks coming across and I'd come across these doe beds every once in a while that, you know, I really expected to see a deer at any time. So, you know, it was that, that fine line of trying to get caught up to him, but not going so fast that I was just going to bust him without a chance you know uh, at a first encounter um, so the one, once I got through that you know I mean I wasn't far behind this this buck at all he uh, he was in his bed and, and stood up uh, when I did catch up to him but you know he, he wasn't he wasn't there an hour I'd say probably less half hour 20 minutes he uh, he was right there Well, he's down. <clears throat> so having trouble with the GoPro. The batteries were too cold, so it wouldn't stay on. But uh, we went through a lot of thick stuff, a lot of, a lot of thick stuff. And uh, I thought he was going to be bedded in there, but he was just cruising. He never. He stopped and fed once. Just cruised along, and finally we got into. Well, kind of a wet area here, but you could see, you could see pretty good. So I was following his track there and <clears throat> looking and I looked up and I just looked like a deer standing up there about 50 yards away. So <clears throat> I, uh, I just kept looking at his head. I couldn't see the horns. I was moving around and he was just standing there looking at me. I could see his big body, but <clears throat> I looked and looked, and finally he turned his head, and I see something flash there, so I put it on his front shoulder, and I touched her off, and he went down and started dragging himself, so I give him another one, right in the back straps, <laughs> but we got him. He's gonna go over two. He long, heavy, big neck on him. <sighs> a 
wasn't until after I, I shot the buck. Um, of course, he didn't go anywhere. Uh, pretty much dropped right there. But, uh, um, you know, I'd slowed down a little bit where it opened up. Um, but I really hadn't seen any indication of him laying down. Uh, he'd stopped and nibbled a couple times on some old man's beard on a couple of lowdowns, you know, way behind where I was at this point. Uh, it wasn't until after I got looking around after I shot him, I saw where he'd fed heavy uh, on a bunch of old man's beard on a blowdown, and then uh, it made a hook and laid right down. So, um, you know, sometimes you get lucky like that. You know, I've had several times where they were laying in a spot that, you know, I wouldn't have had a chance. And, you know, other times I've walked by him laying there and I probably should have seen him. So, uh, you know, appreciate you watching this. Uh, I hope this helps. If you're uh, getting into tracking, never done it, it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, best experience you're going to get is just go out and do it. Um, you know, I learned, I read Larry Benoit's book, I watched uh, all the Benoit hunting videos. They're great if you haven't seen them. Um, you know, I, I didn't start till my early 20s. I played uh, college basketball and that started November 1st. So if I was lucky, I got residence only day and a, a day or two maybe on Thanksgiving if I was lucky. Uh, but at that point, I you know, hadn't really started hunting up in the big woods yet. and. Uh, obviously didn't have a lot of time to scout or anything so um, if you're like me I I can't stand sitting I find a spot to sit and after 10 minutes I'm already thinking that you know there's a better spot over that way over this way or pretty much anywhere but where I am right now so um, you know for me I've always been in pretty good shape so it's just a fun way to hunt and being on that track you know, I know there's deer up there somewhere instead of, uh, you know, sitting for days and waiting uh, for one to come across. And, you know, my hat's off to the guys that can do it. You know, they kill some great bucks and I just don't have the patience for it. So hit that subscribe button if you enjoy the videos. And, uh, you know, like I said, I appreciate you watching and going to be doing some ice fishing this week. So. Hopefully I have ice fishing video up for you soon.